So what's the difference between holes and S-dopes? And I'm not talking about textbook definition of one's removable, one's non-removable. I wanna be able to see visually what exactly is the difference or why does removable, non-removable even make any sense? So we have a rational expression. If we wanna be able to find the discontinuities looking for the holes and looking for those asymptotes, what do we wanna do? We want to simplify. How do we simplify? Factor, factor, factor. Now, hopefully if you've made it to rational expressions, you've had to factor quadratics. Here we have a difference of two squares. Here we have a trinomial. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining the factoring because I hope that you have enough practice being able to identify this is a difference of two squares. And then this, we're thinking what two numbers multiplied give me negative six, add to give me negative five. And do not say positive six and negative one, right? Because those do not multiply to give me a positive six. I need two positive numbers or two negative numbers that multiply to give me six, but they have to be negative because they have to add to negative five. So therefore that's gonna be an X minus three, X minus two. Okay, so here's what we have. We have now our numerator and denominator in factored form. We have these quantities, right? There are expressions that are separated by multiplication and that's critically important because when we have terms separated by multiplication, we can now apply the division property. Basically being dividing out those terms just because it's gonna to equal to one. So what I see here is I have x minus three divided by x minus three. Since they're exactly the same, we can say that these are going to divide out to one. Now, so basically you have a one times x plus three and a one times x minus two. So it's not like they went away. We didn't cancel them out. Don't say that. We, they divided into one. Now we don't need to really represent that one though because it's multiplication. So now I have an x plus three times a x minus two. I'm sorry, an x plus three divided by an x minus two. Okay, so here's where the removable and non-removable discontinuities come from. We have this expression, okay, this original function. Through the simplifying process, the x minus three's got removed, right? They technically just divided to one. You could technically still say they're there, right? They're just divided over to one because anything divided by itself is just equal to one, right? So you could even put a one all the way in the front there if you want, instead of writing it like this, you could also just say, well, maybe let's just put a nice little one right in front. But again, one times everything, one times the numerator, one times the number, it doesn't matter, it's there, okay? We just know it's there. But it got removed from the simplified expression. The only thing left is the x minus two, which is non-removable, right? It did not get removed. So we have a removable discontinuity and a non-removable discontinuity. Now, why are we still calling them discontinuities? What did I mean by that? Well, the reason by the discontinuity is one, they're gonna be a break in the graph. If we were to graph this, you would recognize that'd be a point where the graph is not gonna be continuous. And why? The reason why is because for certain values of your discontinuities, they're gonna make your denominator equal to zero. And we cannot divide by zero. Now, a quick little mistake that students will say is to say, all right, well, those discontinuities are gonna be at negative three and negative two. No, they're not gonna be at negative three and negative two. So let's go and first identify the hole, right? Remember the hole is your removable discontinuity. So that is what got removed. Now, what was the expression that got removed? The x minus three. That is what we're gonna to wanna to set equal to zero. Now we say, all right, what values make this equal to zero, right? What value of my expression makes that equal to zero? Well, we can see that's gonna be an x equals a three. So my whole is going to be at x equals three. Now again, you could probably just do that in your head. You don't really need to set it to expression, but it happens so many times as students, I don't know if they are not fully understanding it, or if they just kind of make a mental error, but they'll always constantly say like, the whole's at negative three and the vertical asymptote is at negative two. No, take your non-removable expression, x minus two, set it equal to zero, and x is equal to two. Now you can see we have a vertical asymptote at x equals two and a hole at x equals three. So if you want more examples of these types of problems, then go and check out the videos I have for you down below.